What's up guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I installed a radon mitigation system for about 500 US dollars in my house. Uh, we'll go over how radon could get into your house, how basic mitigation systems work, uh, the cost for all the ingredients. I'll walk you through what my system looks like step by step and then go over some results, how it turned out at the end of the video. So before we jump right into it, uh, don't try any of what you're about to see at home. So how does radon get into your house? There's a couple of ways here using our fancy high-tech graphics. We'll go over them. Uh, got a little representative side view house. We've got the basement. We've got your first level. Uh, we've got some ground lines here in brown. And so, of course, under the ground, you've got all this soil. And as your soil decays, there's small amounts of trace uranium in there that uh, is radioactive and those little radon particles uh, work their way into your house, mainly through the differential pressure uh, that's found as the weather changes uh, comparing outside your house to inside your house. So that, uh, that you see you got some positive pressure here, some negative pressure inside your house. That pressure differential creates some small amounts of airflow that work their way through the cracks in, the, in your poured walls and your poured slab. And of course, concrete's a little porous, so you may have some flow through that actually. Um, so because your house is also then sealed these concentrations can uh, get higher than they would be in the natural atmosphere and uh, could potentially pose a health risk I guess I'm not going to debate that there seems to be a lot of fear mongering out there about this and I'm sure some of it is justified but some of it uh, seems to be a little excessive and uh, you know, everyone trying to make a buck. So we won't get into that, but we'll uh, talk about how you can get rid of it. Our uh, sample house here that kind of is reminiscent of my house. It has a modern gravel foundation. It's got some drain tile to help drain that foundation uh, with some perforations here cut in that drain tile, all leading back to a sump pit that is open to your basement. So uh, that's another area where you could have radon uh, you know, flowing through your drain tile and flowing out of your uncapped sump pit. And in your sump pit, you got a little sump pump that pumps the water out of that. But we're gonna use this sump pit as a means for a radon highway. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to install our radon mitigation system here with these high-tech graphics and we're going to start off by first capping the sump pit airtight and we're going to seal any big major cracks in your poured slab to help create an airtight seal um, that we're going to then negatively pressurize underneath that or sub slab as oh yeah and then one other uh, way i forgot to mention that you could have some radon being drawn in is through the stack effect so you've got your warmer less dense air rising and your denser colder air sinking down to your basement that creates some airflow too that could draw in radon so with our sump pit sealed off and airtight we're going to tap into that with some pvc put a fan on it outside and turn that fan on and by doing that we're going to create enough negative pressure uh, throughout throughout the foundation that draws any of the uh, the radon that's in your soil, and we're going to draw it all in from around and pull it up through this PVC and out into the atmosphere where it can disperse naturally at much lower concentrations than uh, being stuck inside your house. So. Uh, you know, that could be represented here. We've got all this negative pressure on the suction end of your radon fan, and it's going to draw all that in. And on your discharge side, you got positive pressure, and it's shooting it outside. I think there's a radon uh, mitigation link code that you really should follow if you're going to, you know, for whatever reason, have the idea to do this install yourself. And that is to make sure you put the fan outside uh, the reason for that being, if you install the fan inside your house and that fan housing or something, or or you've got a bad fitting, there's a there's a leak, 
on the discharge side and that discharge side if it's inside your house you could really ramp up the concentrations of radon and subterranean gases inside your house that probably wouldn't be the best idea for you so make sure that fans outside and it, when it's outside all you have is the suction side inside your house that means if you got a bad fitting or a leak um, you're not going to be able to pull as much pressure you know down here per se but nothing is working its way back inside the house it's all negatively pressurized so everything's going to be working its way outside the house so real quick here's a top-down view of what my basement looks like it's about a 1800 square foot footprint um, and so because my sump where I'm going to be connecting this to this is a top-down view of what the pressure is going to look like in the gravel foundation um, the bigger arrows being the more the most negative pressure and as the arrows get smaller we're going to have less and less and less pressure um, I didn't test whether my fan's going to have enough capacity. I just kind of winged it and hoped I had, uh, you know, some pretty porous foundation gravel. There's some air gaps in between there so we can get enough pressure. If you get a real fancy contractor uh, who's probably going to charge 2500 or three grand, they will test and drill little pilot holes all throughout your slab and make sure your fan's going to pull enough pressure. Um, but I was winging it and hoping for the best. So here's a quick breakdown of some of the costs of all the ingredients to the mitigation system. I tried to organize the costs starting uh, from basically from your slab and the sump dome all the way to the exterior. And I'll go through the actual system itself step by step. Um, you can pause the video here, you know, let me know in the comments if you got any questions, but all this stuff is pretty common. Besides, I will go in depth a little bit about this fan kit that I got. So I did a little research about the fans. There's this really great website where uh, some radon mitigation contractor, he actually uh, created fan curves for all these um, uh, experimentally himself, which is a really great resource to put online for free so people can make these decisions uh, this fan i got is actually a uh, pre-wired low voltage fan so a lot of the wire a lot of the fans you've got to wire yourself and so i'm sure i paid a little more for the convenience um, but by the time you add an outlet which mine would be pretty far from my fuse box and um you know, take all the labor into account. I didn't mind playing a little bit of a premium. And I actually looked, uh, this fan here, uh, this Pressure Tech PT2 DC4 fan has more airflow and more static pressure than uh, the, the most common uh, fans you can get at Home Depot or Menards or Lowe's for uh, the same price range, about 120 to 140 dollars. So I really like this. It came with a speed controller too, where I can dial it down if the radon's under control and use a little bit less energy. Uh, regardless, though, this fan at 80 watts running 24-7, if your electricity is about 17 cents a kilowatt hour, that's only going to cost you uh, around $100, $120 a year, which is pretty reasonable in electricity costs. So here's that fan curve. Um, I've got a buddy who works in HVAC. Shout out to my homie AJ. Uh, the president, Andrew Johnson, he ran some duct pressure loss calcs for me. We estimated th with the PVC piping, duct work, all that pressure loss was probably going to be close to about 1.3 or 1.2 uh, inches of static. So we'd still be able to flow probably in the range of, I would say, uh, you know, 140 to 120, let's say even if we were uh, a little shy in our estimations, uh, you'd still be flowing a good amount of air here at a pretty reasonable uh, fan wattage. We're down to the basement now on some phone audio. So first thing I was gonna show you guys, um, like I talked about was ceiling any big cracks in the poured slab, I used this uh, 
crack flex sealant by Sika. Um, that worked pretty well. I tried some other stuff that was a little bit too flowy and would just fall into the cracks. So I got some uh, backer rod here, cut it in half because it was 3 8 inch and it was still a little too big. My, my gaps were maybe closer to a quarter of an inch, an eighth inch. So uh, cut that up, put a little backer rod in and put some sealant over. So we're gonna walk over here to the sump pit and we've got our radon piping there, the big three inch pipe. Uh, could have gone with four inch, but because my runs were so short, I thought three inch would probably do well enough and keep things manageable uh, from a install aspect. Um, so there's the three inch radon pipe there, and then I've got a two and a half inch for my sump pump discharge, pump line. Um, what I did was install a flexible connector there on the sump discharge. So if that ever needs to be serviced, you can service that. I've got a flexible line on the flexible connector on the radon line. So likewise, if I have to take the lid of this dome off, I can. So to do that, when you install it, uh, you got about 12 Tapcon concrete screws that you screw in to the slab and then seal it with some uh, silicon, silicone, whatever you want to seal it with. <laughs> um, so here's the top of the sump dome and you've got uh, eight bolts there. So this, this is the base part and then this is the top of the lid that you can undo those bolts and take off. Um, if you need to get in there and service your sump pump. So this line runs up, we 45. We've got our YouTube manometer here where at this point we've got about uh, 1.3, 1.4 inches of water column. Um, so you're going to have a little less due to the pressure drop probably by the time you get down there. But we're still moving, I would say, at least 100 cubic feet per minute. Uh, we run up, and between the joists here, uh, I've got this sloped a little bit, probably an eighth inch per foot, back towards the sump pit. So any condensation that forms outside or in the fan runs all the way back down and will just drain into the sump pit. And... Um, Got it routed above the intake of my um, furnace, and let's go outside. But before we go outside, I forgot to show, here's the little speed controller where you can dial that speed um, faster or slower, depending on how good your system is, and if you're really trying to save wattage. I've got mine cranked uh, to maybe about two-thirds speed right now, and then we're plugged in to this singular um, outlet. I said we were going outside, but I lied. It's getting dark out, so I figured I'd take a few pics of how the outdoors looks, and we could go over them. So I know the first thing everybody's going to say for a correct radon install, you're supposed to have your discharge pointed up um, at least two feet over your roof line and away from any operable windows. Um, however, I did not have a big enough ladder to get to the top of my house here and properly secure it. And I also think that would be a lot of wasted pressure drop. So I know the reason they um, you know, recommend that is to prevent any radon from coming back inside your house. I also think a lot of the reason is sound as well, because there is a bit of sound uh, coming out of your discharge there. But due to my limited uh, ladder capacity and uh, wanting to save and conserve the pressure, I installed it this way. I was, as I installed this, um, you know, I was feeling around with my hand, and this air that's being shot out of the uh, end here, you know, it's almost acting like a nozzle. 
the the spread is pretty tight for quite a few feet outside away from my house so knit uh, before it starts to slow down and diffuse with the atmosphere here so i don't think any of that is going to work its way back into my house um, also another reason why i didn't really think it made sense to install straight up and down is you are going to be blanketing your house then potentially in a cloud of radon as it falls down um, and also you could have water when it rains a, a heavy rain i don't know if there's enough pressure to keep that rain from uh, falling down i know you're going to have some condensation no matter what that falls down back through your fan housing and down into the sump pit um, but I figured I would try and prevent as much water from getting in there as possible to make the fan last as long as it can. Um, here you can see the wiring coming out of the fan going inside the house. I do have an electric disconnect inside the house uh, before it works its way through the basement where I showed you guys in that outlet. And then real quick for results here. I was, uh, my house, I'm in uh, EPA zone two, which is on average between two to four uh, picocuries per liter of radon. Um, some long-term testing here over the month showed to be, that was pretty accurate. I would say my average was somewhere in the three, three and a half, um, range uh, four is the recommended action line and two between two and four is maybe considerate so i figured for health and resale value on the house i would go ahead and install this um, after the install here i have had it uh, maybe less than a week so i'm going to need to monitor this long term i've still got some tail end here as the average was dropping um, as I installed it, but after the install, the highest peak I've seen, peak that is, is like 1.1. So on average, I think once this uh, tail ends out of there, I'm probably going to be in the 0.4 to 0.6 range, um, hopefully, or, or lower, um, which would be somewhere around the level seen in the ambient air. With that said, thanks for watching and good luck. See you guys around.